Welcome back. Hispanic Heritage Month is going on right now. Now, it started um, September 15th and goes through October 15th. Nine News medical expert Dr. Pyle Coley joins us now to talk about the inequity Hispanic people face when it comes to health. Such an important topic. So thank you for uh, re being here and talking about this. Just let's start off by talking about what do you mean disparity when it comes to health care? You know, it's interesting. In medicine, we never realize that sometimes health outcomes can be different for social reasons or economical reasons. And in the last decade, we've really started paying attention to this because we realize it's one of the things more than the screenings, more than the medicines that can impact health care. And when you're talking about 19% of the U.S. population being Hispanic and them having a huge disparity when it comes to many different kinds of diseases, whether it's diabetes, which they're more likely to get and more likely to die from, obesity, similarly more likely to get more complications, TB or chronic liver disease, you really do feel like we need to do better. I'm so glad that you're highlighting this, right? I don't think a lot of people know this. So what are some of the conditions which disproportionately impact the Hispanic community? Well, we've talked about a few of them, but some of the ones that weren't on that graphic that we just saw, cancer. So Hispanics are less likely to get screened for cervical cancer. And that, again, really highlights that sort of social problem that we have. Similarly with heart disease, and this is near and dear to my heart because I see a ton of Hispanic patients who we missed the boat on had they only been educated, right. had they only understood that they were supposed to get this because a lot of our, our materials, our education is all in English and there may be a language barrier. Had they only realized that you know, eating the certain types of foods that they eat, which tend to be heavier in carbohydrates, carbohydrates and saturated fats weren't good for them, we could have completely changed the trajectory of their disease. Wow, it would have and, saved lives. And a lot of this sounds familiar because I've done a lot of digging into the disparities of uh, black Americans yes, when it comes to health care. Sure. And so this, this all sounds very familiar, but one of the big factors there is people don't go to the doctor because they don't feel comfortable because they don't have doctors that look like them. So is true. that something in the Hispanic community as well? Very Thanks. much so. Mm -hmm. And I see that even in my own practice. And I'm trying really hard to learn Spanish because sometimes communicating to someone in their native language makes all the difference. Totally. To your point, Alex, where people trust you a little bit differently. And even if you can't necessarily speak the language, even understanding some of the language barriers. So for example, in the Hispanic community, mental health conditions are really stigmatized, just like they are in the Indian community as the well. The black community as right? well, right? And so people don't talk about them and people don't realize them. And so everyone struggles silently. So we have this sort of outbreak of young Hispanic women that are more likely to die by suicide because we're not talking about it. We're not addressing it. We're not destigmatizing it like we should. That frustrates me. I mean, again, this is all about saving lives, whether it's physical or mental. So t you're always solution driven, which yes. I appreciate. So talk to me about what needs to be done to fix this. So there's some biological reasons for the differences, right? Actually, Hispanics age a little less than the rest of us. That's So the biological differences you can't do anything about if they have higher risk due to their family history, what have you. But all the other things, the access to care, the education, the literacy, the first part is talking about it, but the second part is creating resources in those languages, as Alex alluded to, having more diversity in the healthcare field at all levels and really appealing to people where they are. So there was a very famous black barbershop study where instead of mm -hmm. treating patients for high blood pressure in the office, you went to meet them in their barbershop and you were much more likely to get treated and stay on medication. So really understanding the culture, embracing it is going to be the difference. Yeah, that that's is so telling. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. Dr. Coley, quite the uh, impressive and important topic. Thank you so much for all of your insight as always. Appreciate you.